we're gonna take this cover down here. It's covering everything. So it's a bunch of 10 millimeter screws. Some down here. There's a button plug down here we gotta get off to. different styles in it. To the, this one's got the one with the center you gotta pop out. Do this job, make sure you have some spares of these because this stuff doesn't always go back in. You have some rude grime holding that one in there, Steve. Yeah. It's coming. All right. There's one over here. All right. Yeah. The pain. You got this last 10 millimeter. Let me slide this out. All right, so we have a 3-8 socket in the uh, hex head train plug on the transmission. Thought it was going to be a 10, but uh, the 10 was too loose. I'm going to pull this down. The fluid looks a little dirty, so... I'm going to hold the pan up to it because it's going to make a mess. We don't want to make a mess. The fluid is dirty. It needs to be changed. You can smell it. Doesn't really have a good pink color to it. Yeah, it's kind of kind of brown. Burnt like it's original. So it's original, and uh, so we're gonna just hold the pan up and pull this out and get this thing to drain out. There's a seal washer on this. Just gonna make sure it's clean when we go to put it back on. So we're just going to set this aside right now, let this drain out for a minute, and we'll be back. All right, so we're going to put the 10 millimeter, I mean the 3 8 plug back in here. And check that gasket, that's good. Let's get this threaded in. We'll tighten this down, wipe it down. We started cracking some of these 10 millimeters loose. We're going to need a quarter drive swivel set up to get into some of them. They're kind of tight. I'm not really comfortable uh, impacting these bolts down, so I think we're going to crack them all by hand. And um, so I'm not going to really show you that. We're going to tighten this up right now, and then we're going to crack all of these 10 millimeter bolts loose. And we needed the quarter drive swivel to get up into these corner ones here to fit in here nice and snug and, and crack these loose. And the bolts are all kind of hard coming out and they're metal into an aluminum case. I'm really not comfortable trying to impact these things down and they're gonna be going slow. We're gonna to have to tighten them a little, bring them back, and we'll lube them all up when we're done. And um, so we'll, we'll get the pan down and then we'll show you where, where we are from there. But that, that's the process, they're all 10 millimeters and I wouldn't zip these down with a gun. Um, just not sure that you know, you're gonna snap one off and then you're gonna to have to drill and tap it. So we're gonna take our time with it and then we'll get the pan down and we'll show you where we are. So we realized we can just take this bracket off here and uh, we'll have more room to get at these bolts because some of them are really tight. 17 millimeter.
we have full access to get into the rest of the bolts here. So we started cracking these loose by hand with the tens. And um, we're gonna get them cracked loose a lot before we put the, the little gun on them. I'm, they've been tight coming out the whole way. And if they feel tight coming out, I, I'd rather be working them by hand because I don't wanna snap any. And they've been in, in here, this is the first time it's being serviced. So you know, I wanna make sure that nothing snaps on us. And we're gonna clean all these bolts and then we'll put a little never seize on them or grease or something on them. See, these feel a little better right here. These are definitely better. So I can put the gun, zip gun on these after I crack these all loose. But the tight ones, you're gonna wanna take them out by hand. You just don't wanna snap one of these bolts and it's not like you can just silicone it and hope for the best. It's gonna leak. You gotta drill and tap the hole on it if you do that. So we'll get these cracked loose until they start feeling loose and then we can put the gun on them and uh, get the rest of the pan down. Now it's nice it has the drain plug so we already drained the pan so when we get these bolts to come down we'll take the back bolts out first and lower it this way and if there's any residual fluid it'll leak into our bucket and uh, see these have all been tight coming down the whole way. I just don't want any issues, so. So we got magnets here, and we're just gonna wipe the surface where they go, and we're gonna clean the magnet down. And there's some clutch material on there, and the vehicle's got 170,000, this is normal. You're just concerned about metal in the pan, and there is no metal, so that's good news. So we're just gonna clean these magnets up. And they got a little, little metal tab right here to show you where they go. I'm just going to sit it back in there. And this one here, we haven't touched this one yet. See the fuzziness on it right here? Well, that's just a little clutch material. And we're just going to clean this all up. We'll wipe it down, we'll scrape the gasket off. And we'll show you the filter. We're going to remove the filter from it. And um, it's got a couple bolts holding it in. And we'll get this thing back together. You're just trying to clean this up the best you can. And this blackness is clutch material, um, and it's got a little magnetic in it, so that's why it's sticking to the metal, a little metal fibers, if you will, in the clutch. And that's what's sticking. So we just want to wipe this pan down nice and clean. And uh, So I see on the internet all the time, Steve, as I see and I hear people say, oh, you shouldn't change the transmission fluid in your transmission. Well, you kind of should because... If you service the filter, if you're able to, you're able to change the fluid. All this material floating around is what can hang up your valve body and cause transmission issues. The main problem with transmissions is fluid that breaks down and the transmission overheats. When you put synthetic transmission fluid in it, it's going to run 20 to 40 degrees cooler for your clutches. That's what's going to give you longevity on your transmission. Especially if you're towing, you're plowing, you're working it hard, you want to get synthetic fluid in there. And this thing has a drain plug on it, which is great. So you can put a drain plug in this thing. And uh, I mean, it has a drain plug in it, so you can clean your fluid, just drain your fluid and refill it. So this guy's gonna have a new filter in here. He's gonna know the filter's clean. And now if he decides he wants to run this thing on his next oil change, just drain the fluid, dump another four to five quarts in it to get his fluid level back up accurately. Then the transmission is almost flushed out. So that's the direction we're going with this one. Okay. All right, so we're just peeling the gasket off its cork, and you know this thing hasn't been touched before. So we, you know, once we get this off, I'm going to show you. You want to make sure that someone didn't over tighten the pan before. You want to run your fingers across where the bolts are to make sure that the pan isn't beveled upward and has like a bunch of bumps on it, because then it's going to leak. So this cork gasket's coming off uh, so far pretty good. It's got a couple of splits in it, you know. It's dried out. So it's time. All right, so we got it off of one piece, so that's good. Dry this all down. Now you barely needs to be clean. Jeez, this came off nice. So your um, your pan here, you're looking to see how these are flat right here. If you over tighten these screws, this thing's going to bump up and bump up, and then it's going to leak. So it hasn't been over tightened. So gaskets came off really great. We're going to put a thin coat of grease on this and then stick our gasket to it. 
we've got our magnets clean, back in place, the plug is tight, and um, the pan is clean on the inside. So we got a new rubber gasket here, which I'm a fan of. Um, let me make sure we get the right gasket. And the holes are smaller, so which is nice about this is we're going to put the the um, a little grease on this to stick this thing down, but you're going to be able to start threading your bolts up in here, and that's what's going to really hold your gasket in place. So we're going to get like four bolts, put them in the corners, and we're going to put a little grease on this gasket. And I like putting grease on it because as you tighten it down, it's tightened down evenly. You'll see the grease ooze out from the side, then you know you have a smooth, flat, tight surface up there, so you know that everything's tightened evenly. So we'll get the grease and stick this on and come back and show you what it looks like with the bolts. Okay, okay. so we, we got our, we showed you the magnets are in place and we cleaned the whole pan and we put um, a um, grease around the edge of the pan. And this gasket's nice, it has all the holes are smaller so all the bolts are pushed in place right now and they're all lubed up because we pushed them through the grease. So these are all greased up now and um, the gasket's in place. We're gonna go over and change the filter and we'll give this a quick wipe down again before we get it to put it in place. And uh, this will be good. Make sure our magnets are in the right place. These go down, touch the little metal rib there. And um, this one's just in place right here. And this is all ready to go on. Our plug's tight and everything's greased up. So let's go over and change the filter. Alright, so we're going to crack these 10 millimeters loose. And when this thing comes down, of course, it's going to puke fluid. So we're going to just crack these. I don't like to just hit them with the gun and, um, you know, make a mess. Keeping them on the sides, they're probably the same length, but we're gonna double check. Yeah, they are the same length, but we're gonna keep them side to side. There's a rubber O-ring that holds this thing up, so it's holding it up in place right now. But as soon as we grab it it's, and pull it down, it's gonna make a splash. There's fluid sitting on top of the filter, and so all these bolts are the same length. I'm going to grab a rag so that when we lower this down, I'm going to make a mess. Okay, so here's our O-ring. started to come off the filter here. The new one comes with the filter. And that's the position that it came down with here. So now we're going to dry our surface here for the O-ring. We want to make sure there's no debris in there. Anything that looks good, just dry this down, try and get the rest of the shitty fluid out of here. This is the valve body. Um, wipe our pan down now while it's off. Okay. So the gas material, nothing really stuck to this. It came down super clean, which is great. Here's our old filter. We're gonna grab our new filter. I'm going to put a little, just get a little lube on the O-ring here, and we can put this up in place, pops up, let's catch a bolt here, run these slowly up with the gun and then get the filter so I can feel the o-ring popping in place because the o-ring is still there but it has not gone up. You see the light? Over here on the sink. Okay the o-ring stayed in place but we got to get this to sink down into here and we'll press it up with the uh, with the gun very slowly to make sure it goes in even.
this. Okay, we'll tighten this by hand. Come over here and look. Make sure we can see the O-ring in here. Okay, the O-ring went up. All right, so we just made sure that our O-ring sat in nice. We were almost doubting it, so we lowered it back down to make sure, and it did sit in fine. And we're just snugging these up. You don't have to go crazy on them. Okay, everything's clean. The gasket's all ready to go on for the pan. We're going to get our new pan, our pan in place and um, start tightening it up. So we got our filter up in place, get all the paw prints off of it, wipe down the outside again. It's nice and clean the way the gasket came off, which is fantastic. We took the support bracket down so we have full access to it. Our drain plug goes in the back like this. And so the pan can start going up. We have all the screws in it and we're gonna catch these all by hand. We're not tightening anything with the gun until we get every one of these started. And we've got grease on all of the bolts now. So we know that when they were coming down, they were kind of tough. And the only thing we're gonna use a little zip gun for is just to run them down until we get some tension. You're gonna to wanna to tighten this all up by hand. Get the zip gun and just run these down and just until they stop to give me any type of resistance and I want to hand tighten all of this stuff. I'm walking around here, a couple, of, a couple of them are still kind of tight. I know, I know that this started. I'm gonna tighten all of them by hand now. Okay, so we're just snugging these down until they, until they feel like there's some snug on them. And see, these are tight and easy. I just didn't want to go over with the gun. And I'm gonna finish tightening them at the end by hand, going all the way around. All right, so we got these all snug down and we're starting to um, snug them up now by hand. Remember I was telling you about the grease, you know, make sure it's tight. See, it's just oozing out a little bit up there. So you know when you start tightening it down, it comes out, you know it's flat. Little trick, right? Yeah, you know it's tight enough. You know, these screws can strip out very easily. They're small, they're only uh, M6s. We're gonna go all the way around, make sure they're snug. 
We're gonna dry everything down on the pan, put our metal bracket back in place, and fill our fluid. So the thing about being an old guy working on a car is Steve and I know some tricks as young kids don't know, right, Steve? And you said I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I see some gray hair on that wagon. Ah, jeez. <laughs> all right, so these are all snug, and we can wipe down our pan, make sure it's clean, and plugs nice and tight, everything's in there. And um, we're gonna wipe everything down because we did the radiator uh, hoses, so everything's a little wet. So we're gonna wipe this all down and we'll get our bracket back in place right now. We're gonna never see those, those two long bolts that came up here and then the two short ones here. And then we'll show you that. You got the bracket, we're gonna push this up in place, line this up. It sits on the little cover here. There's a bunch of button plugs in this thing that we're missing. We're gonna have to put in. Just start it by hand and put some never seas on it so I know it's gonna go up good. These are 17s. Actually, it wasn't that bad taking these four bolts out of the meeting. No, no. I think the time, the time savings taking this yeah. bracket out. Because we could have went over the top with, through this cover with a wrench, but it was time saving, you know? Um, definitely, absolutely. So, all right, so let's snug these up with the gun. That's it, we'll get some button plugs and we're gonna put our cover back on underneath there. And um, we'll, uh, this thing will be all buttoned up and then we'll come up and we'll show you how much fluid you need to, to fill it. So we're doing the transmission fill now. We changed the filter, uh, internal filter, pan, gasket, and um, we got it all back together, covers are all on, and we're um, filling the fluid. We just drained what we took out of the bucket um, and we got four and a half quarts out. So we're gonna put four and a half quarts in and then we're gonna run it and then see what we got. And it's going through this dipstick, so you gotta fill a little slow to get it done. So we'll get four and a half quarts in it, and then we're gonna run it and um, put the dipstick in it, get it up to temperature, and we'll show you what we got. And I put the dipstick in, we just ran it through all the gears, and then push it down, make sure it gets flush. It's got a little tab you have to push to the side here to get this thing to spring out and then we got it out we got our dipstick here and it's got a, a hot and a cold mark and it still looks like it's low for the cold mark so we're going to put that other half a quarter when it's hot it should be up to this level right here so this training could have been a little low so we're going to double check it check it again and then put another half a quarter in it we've got four and a half quarts in it so far So before we took the reading, what Rob did is he held the switch on the brake pedal, went through the gears, drive, reverse, neutral, to get the fluid going throughout the transmission, right Steve? Yep. Alright, so we're going to put the other half a quart in it, check it again. Look here, here's our hot mark and here's our cold mark. And we are at right in the middle. So I'm gonna check it one more time and we should be good where we are. It's gonna, this thing could have been down a half a quart. We took four and a half out and we checked it. We're just past the cool mark right here. So it's right where my thumb is. So this is perfect for it. So we ended up with putting five into this one and um, started off and took four and a half out. And um, so we're at a good level where we want to be now.